Do you see Amazon's getting sued because the way that they made it so hard to opt out of the payments and they do like every three months instead of every month? Yeah. yeah. So you don't know what's coming? Yep. That's why somebody should fight Bezos. I don't know. <laughs> why would anybody want to fight e- Elon Musk and Zuckerberg? They're decent people, right? Uh, I'm I'm rooting for Zuck, but yeah. Now, you know, the thing is, you never know. Do you think these billionaires, like, do you think Zuckerberg, like, for fun, he's going to another country and hunting a kid in Indonesia, like, for sport? No. I think Zuckerberg, I think there's different types of rich people. Whereas, like, my read, it's a, I mean, you can only retell so much from the media. But my read on Zuckerberg is, like, this is a dude who wakes up and does meditation. And then he eats exactly 10 almonds. <laughs> and then does a hundred diamond push-ups, and then like reads some like obscure Chinese text. <laughs> Whereas like some rich guys, where it's like, yeah, I'm gonna go to Brazil and fuck hookers. Or like Elon Musk buy a buy a girl a horse to beat him off. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean that's the one he got caught for. Uh-huh. That if he got caught one time, you know he did that a hundred times. He's bought horses for everybody. Man, but like, dude. there's some rich people who don't who got rich because they're like, Elon Musk is the type of guy who like. He, Tesla was basically a gamble for him. Yeah, so he, was PayPal. Well, now PayPal, he like legit just cashed out. Uh, okay. he, that wasn't his money he put up. He just like, he was part of it and they just got, he gave, made hundreds of millions of dollars. But then like when he invested in Tesla, it's like he just kept, threw in all of his money and he could have gone bankrupt. It could have gone wrong. But someone like Zuckerberg, it's like, this was just a dude who just like, he had the idea at the right time. He kind of stole the idea a little bit, but it's not like he gambled on it. So it wasn't like a big risk. Yeah. But if you're the type of person who gets rich from risking all of your money, then it's like, yeah, you're just going to keep, you're addicted to that level of, you know, gambling. I knew a tech guy that, uh, I don't know what he did. I want to say it was like an app and he met a guy in college. They were in business school and he, uh, met a guy and they, he just pitched the idea of the app to the guy, but this guy had the upfront money yeah. and he had all the contracts and the smart business. And my, my buddy didn't know anything really about business at that point. He just started business school, but he just had the billion dollar idea or the right. million dollar idea. So anyways, he helped him develop it. They worked on it for like six years straight, even through business school, outside business school. They traveled the country pitching it, right. made major investments. But the guy that put the upfront money wrote up a contract with a small percentage that at the time looked like a big number to my buddy because he was broke. Right. Like I think it was like maybe $300,000. And um, I think... The the business guy knew this app. Oh, I'm selling this for like oh, yeah. five million. Yep. And that's what happened. So my buddy's so bitter. He's like, Yeah, I developed an app that sold for like five million dollars. I only got three hundred thousand. It was my idea. Wow. And he's like, dude, I probably spent damn there fifty grand right. promoting it. Yeah, yeah. Goes to show though, you could stay I mean, like, you can make three hundred grand and still be pissed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just knowing how much you left on the table. Yeah, man. I don't know. To me, it'd be hard to, to. I said, dude, I would. I wouldn't know what to do if I got three hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> I don't think I've made that much money in my entire life in yeah, twenty years of work. You add it all up. Yeah, probably not. And then there's people that make that. Like I seen Logan Paul was seeing how much money he could make. Wasn't he making like a million dollars a day selling something like that? Pokemon. Or well, he's selling drinks or something now. Oh yeah, it's no, like you know that what Gatorade he was, Prime shit or whatever. Yeah, he had that, but he also had um, NFTs. Yeah. He yeah, he cashed out on that, and then like uh, he had to do all these like apology videos for it. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, like all these people just lost their shirt in it. Cause, wow. Yeah. yeah. What's the biggest investment you lost money on, other than taxes? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm never like I I always kind of knew. I mean, I I lost money gambling, but never like big money. Yeah. You lose, you know, thirty bucks here and there or something. But even that, I mean, like it still hurts. Yeah. Anytime you lose money, I think people. That's what stops so many people from like the vast majority of people would never risk the level of wealth that Elon Musk risked to get Tesla. And as much as I don't like Elon Musk, it's also like you got to kind of hand it to somebody who believes in an idea that much. Yeah. To, that drop, willing it all. to just drop it all. Cause it's like, imagine if you had a hundred million dollars, you would have just walked a PayPal money. You would have just walked off. Yeah. Everybody would have walked off. You'd be a psychopath not to. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he's like, yeah, I could just do it as a loss. I don't know. Why would you want to do that as a loss? Yeah, dude, that is crazy. <laughs> but then, like, you see uh, the upside of it. 
And it's like, I get it, I guess. I don't know. Do you think there's something that we don't know that's behind the curtain? Like maybe Elon Musk has always had an unlimited amount of money and he's just the front guy. He's the face. And there's really somebody else behind him. I think what's underestimated when people look at Elon Musk is how lucky that was. Yeah. He was just lucky to be in, because he didn't invent Tesla. They were, uh, they were already, there was already a company, but he was just like, we wouldn't be telling the story if he just lost it all. Now, do you think though, do you think he knows that inner secret? Like you ever look up those videos and they go, as a man thinks his life will be. Do you think (laughs) like he sat in a room and made that happen? I think what happens with those guys is that he was a Silicon Valley guy who got rich and then he got rich by doing more Silicon Valley shit. Yeah. So once you're in that circle and you're behind those closed doors and you're like wearing the goat head and doing all this weird shit. Yeah. I mean, you those guys never go broke, broke. Right. As long as you're in the mix and you're still buddies with all these guys, you're going to get rich somehow. Because they grease somebody up. You're the best of the five people you hang out with. Well, they're all just like, these guys are all billionaires and they're just giving each other money and they're just passing it around. Everybody's investing together. Right. So it's like, yeah, once you're buddies with these like weirdos, it's like, I think you're always at a certain level. It's the that's what the art comes into play. Like that's how these people do pass the money. Oh, yeah. You can't. You know, I I worked at an art fair, and for some reason there was this thing, Freeze Art Fair, which is like the biggest one. I had to count the people getting on the boat. Oh yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio was there. Wow. And he bought dude this piece of art. So basically, it was this metal frame that was huge. They assembled it together. It's almost like those pipes, like you would see a canopy, like you would yeah. make a. But they made it this whole stand that was like 60 feet tall. Then they used fishing string from each corner and it went on a piece of paper, a regular piece of white paper. And it was a a handprint, a red handprint on the piece of paper. Okay. $2 million. Wow. And Leonardo DiCaprio bought it. Well, the scam there, it's not scam, but you buy, I mean like rich people, you like pay an artist $2 million for their art. And then they, you get that appraised for like, you know, a hundred million dollars. You wow. just, you pay the appraiser and you grease them off. Wow. So the, on paper, this thing's worth a hundred million and then you donate it to the museum. And no that's way. That's a hundred million tax write-off right there. Wow. Because you're getting taxed. I mean, like the write-off is based on its worth. That's it's, what I need to do. Well, it's just like your car. It's just like your, your car scam back in the day. Yeah. Where it's like you take your, you know, you take the pink slip to paycheck advance. They give you the most, the biggest appraisal. Because it's like it's in their interest to say the car is worth more. Yeah. And you just walk off with the money. That's how rich people do it, but at like a mega level. Dude, why can't I just do that? 100 million to art. I'll buy something for $5. Well, Grease I think an appraiser 10 grand. That's the thing is that like these kinds of crimes get easier the more money you have. It's mm. way harder to be a regular guy and you're going to grease an appraiser and then try to like pull right. this weird thing with the museum. Because it's like the government knows to look out for that. But it's like when you're on that DiCaprio, like Hollywood level of money, it's like you can just throw this shit around. Man. You start like a weird school, call it the Dominic School of Acting. Yeah. And then like, you know, nobody actually goes to the school, but, you know, it's just like on a door somewhere in Manhattan. Yeah. And then you just write that shit off. Wow. Next thing you know, yeah, you got paid. See, people like Donald Trump, Elon Musk, I mean, like they're actual on paper. They do not make money. Huh. Just for tax purposes. That's so smart. Yeah, all these guys. It's like if you go in Elon Musk's pocket, he's probably got a debit card that's connects to a bank account that's got like ten grand. Wow. He doesn't even. What do you need the money for? Right. Everything is just. It's you know somehow like you end up living in a house that's owned by your business. Yeah. Or something. Or it's like they all figure out all that stuff out. I think I need to get an LLC. What about can I write off the six thousand dollars I spent on the camera and MacBook and all that shit? Oh yeah. That's going to have to help me a little. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because you're like, you're arguing with me. No. <laughs> well, you're a smart guy. <laughs> yeah, but it's you're... like, I'm not going to, if I tell you that it's okay, it's not like you won the war there. But it's like, yeah, that is, these are all legit write offs. Yeah. But the thing is, it's like, you got to talk to a real accountant who's going to like, who doesn't have skin in the game here. He's, yeah. He's going to tell you, like, yeah, okay, that's going to knock you down a little bit. But there's no like so many comics have they act like they got a cheat code. Right. They're just they figured out something. But it's like no, the reason you're getting away with it is that the government hasn't bothered to go after you yet. And you only made thirteen thousand last and we're, year. Yeah, we're talking about small amounts. Right. Yeah. And you're walking dogs. You're not even a comedian. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, you're not like uh this isn't high crime yet. 
Yeah, dude, I remember, dude, I was looking at what I made. It's crazy, dude. My first year in New York, I actually made like $16,000. Then the year after that, I made like 14000 then 12000 I was working for a dog walking company, then 8000 And that's wow. when I was paying taxes. It was nothing back then. I would get money back then. Yeah. I would get like 300 bucks back. Wow. Man. And it's crazy. Yeah, I worked for the same company, and I worked more hours and walked more dogs and made less money every year. Yeah. That's why I quit. I showed them it. I was like, dude, why can't I get a raise? This was back when, dude, I think I, this minimum wage was so low in New York in like 2014. Yeah, it was like 12 bucks. Yeah, and dude, I wasn't even, dude, then I wasn't even making minimum wage. Wow. I swear I was getting like something crazy low, like, dude. Twelve fifty an hour, or maybe it was minimum wage then. Yeah. Well, I was making, I was working six hours a day. I think I was only making like ten bucks an hour. How do you even do that? Wow. I was making like between forty and sixty a day. This is on the books though, right? Well, yeah, but you know how he did it. Yeah. If I wasn't walking dogs, he didn't pay me. So I'd be downtown in Manhattan. Oh yeah. Dude, it would suck so bad. I'd have like a two-hour break. Yep. I'd walk dogs from like. 12 till 2 and then 4 to 6. Wow. So he only paid me 4 hours at, yeah, probably $12 an hour. You just got 4 hours to just go steal sandwiches. Yeah, I would just sit at Whole Foods. (laughs) (laughs) That's when you get into trouble. Yep. And then, dude, I was just walking dogs all day. Yeah. Collecting the money from him. He was getting like um, $30 a walk per dog. So I would walk four of them at a time. Four of them from, you know, and it, dude, I'd walk like four, eight, twelve dogs probably between um twelve and two. Wow! And he'd get like thirty a walk, dude. So he'd be making like three hundred bucks, paying me twenty four dollars. Man, that's the business. It's crazy too, just knowing you. How much like cause you're telling me about all this tax advice you've gotten from random people, but you know so many people who have just pulled off so many scams. Yeah, just like a- apartment scam. Yeah. Or some weird like, yeah, tax scam or something. And it's like this city, New York City is so criminal when you think about it. I have a friend. How many people are just working off the books? Dude, I have a friend that paints and he didn't pay his taxes forever. And then I don't, he never gave anybody his social ever. He he comes in (laughs) and he just paints it for him. And he tells them, hey, if you pay cash, I'll give you a 15% discount. Or he, even when they direct deposit them. Yeah. Nobody has his social, so what? You just get away with that, or what? Like there's, companies there's, won't there's have. No, there's nothing coming back to you at that point. But like, if we went and did a club, right? Yeah. And we sell out. Nobody's gonna have our social. Yeah, they will. Why? The, t- the club is gonna give you a ten ninety nine to fill out. Oh, really? Yeah, they're not gonna pay you in cash. Well, if you're Unless doing your like own rooms, though. Not the venue was. I mean, whatever ticketing company, that money is all on paper somewhere. Wow. So unless you really want to be on some criminal shit and you're getting paid like you know Ray Charles getting paid in ones. Yeah. Then it's like no, that money is on paper somewhere. I would want to if I do, dude. I would do like four or five shows where I would be like cash only tickets. You can't do that. <laughs> it's, like, it's not a matter of can or can't. It's like that is a horrible idea. Why? Because you get I don't know. It's cash. You get robbed. I don't know. Nah, dude. <laughs> There's a reason why, I don't know, any comic is doing a theater. You can see Shane Gillis in the theater. He's not standing out back counting 20s at the end of the night. <laughs> it's like that money went to, There are people whose job it is to figure this stuff out for you. But now... It's just you're at a smart... If you're at that level, it's like you're not risking that level, that much money to do some criminal shit. Right. That's just, yeah, a very dumb way to go about it. And on a low end, if you're making 20000 a weekend and then your Patreon's making like... 30,000 a month. So you're talking in one month, you're making 20, 40, 60, 80 grand plus 30. You're making 110,000. You could cover your taxes off that one month, could cover your whole year almost. No, because it's like you're still, that's only one twelfth of your, you know, Uh, depends on how much you're making overall. But once you're at that level, you pay a guy and all of your money goes to the accountant and then the accountant pays you. Oh, uh, okay. And then it's like whatever m- this money he gave me, it's like I don't got to worry about shit because he already took out all the stuff that I don't got to, you know. Wow. All of your taxes. Well, luckily I didn't lose too much yet. Like this is the first year. I didn't even make much money this year, honestly. Yeah. I did the this is going to be the first year that I make money. Yep. So I'm kind of ahead of the April. I just started doing the cruises this year. I didn't April was my first month. Yep. I made like 3,000 in April. 
So I'm only really behind a thousand for this year. <laughs> this sounds like you're talking to yourself here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make myself feel better. Well, either you, uh, this is just like the, having medical problems or something. It's like you go to the doctor. Right. First thing you do, go to the doctor. You'll just they'll tell you the bad news or the good news, but it's like at least you'll find out. I'm you don't gotta just go around the city talking to random people. Yeah. And ending up in the Bronx and talking to somebody. That's how I do it, dude. I'll be at the deli and stuff. <laughs> Just say I check out this thing on my chest. What do you think? I got this one guy calling me. There's a thing, you know, there's this scam going around, dude. I already fell for it twice with the same damn credit card. So I had a credit card and uh, you know, nowadays what people could do if I look you up, if I pay a certain amount, I could see what type of debt you had. Yep. And uh I could just call you. So this guy calls me and then I realized early on when he's when he's cussing me out, calling me a bitch on the phone, I said he's definitely not a sheriff from New York's courthouse. Well, actually, maybe he would be. But huh. so I get a call when I'm on the cruise for a card that I paid off in the pandemic. I had this credit card, $960 balance. And then in the pandemic, this lady called me. She's like, hey, you could settle this debt out of court like you could settle this right now because it's the pandemic right give us 30 percent or something i paid her like 300 bucks and she was like all right you're all settled wait how'd you pay her i just gave her my credit card info over the phone wow yeah and i probably got scammed there too but she was like no you're settled she was a nice old black lady those would be the best scammers but they're too nice they won't want to scam people. these are all scams <laughs> but uh so i paid her it was a credit card, Barclays card. I never heard from it again. And then I had like three years ago, I had a country guy call me, or two years ago, like a year after I paid it, cussing me out. He's like, you owe $7,000, buddy. And then I, I never paid. I let it go. It's been 20 years. This card's 20 years old. Wow. And um, anyways, I just had a call. Dominic Leonelli, this is the New York City Sheriff's Department. We're calling uh, to subpoena you at 110 McDougal Street. But you can find all the info. Yeah. I Googled the number. It says alert, scam alert, this and that. Block the number. All of these are scams. There's no legit credit card company that's only going to contact you via phone. Wow. I mean, you're going to get something written, and it's going to be like a legit court subpoena. They don't do this over the phone. Well, what There's nothing you ever, ever have to pick up the phone for. That's interesting. Yeah. Huh. Anybody could have just found your information and said, I'll I call was... and see what this guy does. Also, never, ever give your credit card information over the phone. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I don't even have to tell you about that. <laughs> <laughs> that is, yeah, 100% a scam. Wow. So, yeah. I even got... if a credit card company does call you, because maybe the bank sometimes does call, but they're going to contact you in more than one way, especially yeah. if you owe them money. Right. You're going to get letters in the mail. And they're going to be like, it's going to be certified mail from the bank. But it's like, none of these people, this is just some guy who's calling. It. I was like 20 years old when I quit paying it. It's a Barclays card. And dude, I'm 37 now. So it's been 17 years. I'm pretty sure it's all, it's done. No, I mean, the debt is there somewhere. Yeah. And I mean, the way those credit card companies work is that the, car, the credit card company, the bank, usually they, they try to get the money from you. And if it's just too much of a pain in the ass, they'll sell that debt to yeah. somebody else. And then that those person can turn around and sell the debt for even less. So at some point, you just get somebody who like you know they really want to get the money back. And they act like it's uh, they act like it's a nine hundred and sixty dollar bill. They'll call you like you owe eleven thousand because of court fees. Well, but they we'll think you're going to negotiate down. Yeah, then they'll be like, we'll right. settle right now. But it's like that's not something you do over the phone. I was so scared, dude, when I seen New York City Sheriff's Department were coming to arrest you. These <laughs> scammers, they'll well, lie about anything. The thing is, if you're going to get arrested, get arrested. <laughs> if, the, if the cop's going to come to your door, it's like they're not going to be like, all right, well, we talked to him on the phone, so we're not going to arrest him. It's like right. no, you'd be under arrest. Well, you know what else? I'm always in and out of the country every other week. If I had a warrant for my arrest, I wouldn't get through immigration. There's no warrant for arrest from debt. Yeah. You can't get arrested for debt in this country. Wow, that's There's crazy. no debtor's prison. Unless it was like, can't they garnish your wages? But it has yeah. to be like a house debt. I mean, they can garnish your wages and they can go through the tax system and you can get child support or something. But you don't go to jail for not paying your debts, especially You're, like credit card debt. Right. There's They can just sue you. So you if you go to court for it and you don't show up for your court debt, you can get arrested for that. But wow. you can't get arrested for the debt itself. So what if they are suing me and I didn't know? That's possible, but that wouldn't be something you got over the phone. Okay. They'd come, they'd find you. I mean, like the government wants to find you, they'll find you. 
So do you think I'm getting sued for it? No. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> I don't. It's 17 years old. That doesn't matter. Wow. Because unless you filed for bankruptcy or something. Should I just refile bankruptcy? You I can't mean, file bankruptcy on taxes, though. No, no, but it's like you can for credit card debt. That's the point of bankruptcy. So it's like you talk to an accountant and they'll do the math about how much it's. you're better off. Sometimes you're better off just going bankrupt. I'm only about um, 10 grand in credit We're not talking about that much money. Yeah, exactly. You'll figure that out. Yeah. But yeah, there's no way that anybody is actually like, they're not sending the sheriff for 10 grand in credit card debt. Yeah. That's what's so shady about all this stuff though. (laughs) <laughs> is that any of these yeah nobody knows how it works yeah dude they'll scam you dude he's like yeah buddy you're going to jail and then i was <laughs> like hold on a second i said dude i was like who is this and then he he tells me he's an attorney's office i was like a minute ago you told me you were a shirt and then he cuts me off wow. he goes i'll kick your damn ass i'm wow. like hold on dude i don't think you're a cop or a lawyer <laughs> what's funny though is that's probably just some guy in india yeah he just figured out that southern accent <laughs> He's just spending all day long. Hey, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Got to pay the money. Some guy named Vikram. I'm telling you, dude, the best scammer would be an old black lady. Hey, baby. No, we're here to help you out. This is your uh, right. These, these days, it's all AI, man. Wow. It's just a guy talking into a thing. And on the other end, you're hearing, you know. Like the old Scream movies. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to play a game? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you want to pay? <laughs> What's funny to me, though, is that like all this criminal shit we talk about in New York City, cash bodega scamming you apartment scam you know we know the guy who who is on the run from the cops you think that new york city it's one of the biggest cities in america biggest city in the world metropolitan city you would think you commit a crime you want to escape new york city yeah and you want to run you want to get on a greyhound bus and you run to ohio but it's like no new york city is the best place to hide right the best place to hide because you can if you take the bus and you go to cleveland it's going to be way harder to get a cash job in Cleveland. Yeah. It's going to be way harder to find a, a, an apartment building that will take your rent in cash and that won't take, won't try to get your social security number. This is the city to hide in. Right. Go to, if you're Chinese, go to Chinatown, go to yeah. Flushing. No one's ever going to find you. Yeah. If you're white, go to Williamsburg. Oh, if you're white, you go up to the Bronx, you go to little Italy up there. Yeah. Arthur Ave. Oh yeah. That would be a good one. <laughs> you pay somebody. A little too much money, but you pay him in cash and he'll put you in the back of his uh, salami shop. I know a guy got the best scam, dude. I hate to put his scam out there, but what he does, he's a white guy, but he's really from the streets. Like, he'll be like, you know, yo, you know what I mean? Like, we used to be robbing people coming up. And he keeps like a little 25 on him in Times Square. And dude, he's like legit, like... uh, he scams people so hard, dude. This is the best. I told you some scams. Yeah. This is by far the best scam. I might. I don't know if I've ever told you this. He's a friend of mine. And um, actually, you even met him. You've seen him yeah. once in time. I think I know what you're talking about. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Dude, so he goes to these places and he acts gay. He's white and he goes acts real gay, he told Wait, me. what places? He goes to apartments to move oh, okay, in. Yeah. Nice apartments like Williamsburg and yeah, things yeah. like that. And he acts extremely gay and he said he fakes it and calls his dad. He'll be like, yeah, daddy, this place is really nice. And he's just calling one of his other hood friends. Oh, wow. And he's like really acting gay. He said he'll wear the short shorts and everything. Mm. And he'll be like, oh my God, I love it, the decor. Wow. And dude, he's walking around and he goes and they see I'm white and gay and I'm calling my dad and I could tell I really got him. And he's like, I'll really get him. And he's like, I'll tell him, yeah. He's like, all you got to do is move in. And he's like, they'll cut you deals. Be like, you know, he's like, sometimes maybe I'll drop uh, 1200 just to move in the place. I'll give him. And he's like, or I'll even... um, just get my foot in the door and I'll tell him, oh, yeah, no, my father's sending a check. Uh, and then he'll have like a, a BS check sent. That yep. There's no money on it. That'll mm-hmm. bounce or something. Yeah. And he's like, you're already in three weeks by the time they know the check didn't clear. Right. And then he's like, then you don't move out. Or he's like, honestly, he's like, if you could just pay the first month's rent and security, you're good. It's and just he, squatter's rights from that yeah. point. Yeah. And then he goes, what I'll do is I'll start talking to the other people. I, I cut that gay stuff out and I'll start being real street and scaring them. And he goes, you know, all these rich white kids in Williamsburg. He does it a lot in Williamsburg, Lower East Side. Yeah. And he's like, you know, these rich because those Williamsburg apartments are owned by crooked people anyway. They're taking yeah. cash, bro. Yeah. And uh, he goes, you know. 
he goes, uh, I'll start, you know, I'll start acting real hood. And he's like, I'll get all these little white people scared and I'll get them to move out. I'll be telling them, yeah, man, you got to look out. There's black mold. You don't want to breathe that in. He's like, I'll even take a little bit of black spray paint and wow. hit, a, hit a couple of pipes and show them. Be like, yeah. bro. He's like, now show them on the phone all the troubles of black mold. He goes, they all move out. I'll have the whole place to myself. And then he goes, you know, I have one guy. He told me he did it Lower East Side, and he had a guy, Chinese guy, physically trying to fight him. He had to get it on tape. Wow. And the guy was, like, trying to kick him out. He's like, they'll padlock the door and shit. He goes, it's funny. I'll, I'll go in through the, the window or something. And he's like, I'll always get back in, you know, and wow. he's telling me. Wait, so what's the scam? Then? Huh? So what these people do is, because of squatter rights, now these people have an apartment yeah. with nobody living there. Yeah. And this guy won't allow anybody moves in. He's messing it up for him. Right. The first three days there. So then he'll tell them, look, look, man, you want to get me out of here. Things aren't right for me right now. He changes it up, goes real straight on him. Like comes in like, oh, my God. (laughs) And, you know, he goes, look, it's more beneficial if you just pay me. Just pay uh, me right, yeah. 2500 and I'll leave next week because I'm in a messed up place. And you can move people in and you'll make your money back. Wow. And then they pay him. He's like, it works every time. And he doesn't even just do it at one place. He'll hit three or four in one he's month. He's just got multiple yeah. apartments. Wow. He'll just go to all these apartments. And, dude, he's bouncing the check. He's like, yeah, you know, you write. He was telling me something about a check somehow where it would take a couple weeks to clear. I don't know huh. what that is. It's like a small bank or something? Maybe. Wow. And he's like, yeah, he goes, personal check or something. Wow. And then he's like, you know. And then- you know what's funny, too? I, I know I think we've, we've talked about this guy before. I think you pointed him out to me. This guy is doing all this, and he's working. Yeah, and during, he's working cash. <laughs> during the day, he is hustling. I mean, won't say what he's doing, but he is really hustling during the day and doing a semi-legit job during the yeah, day. Yeah, but he don't really come out till midnight. He starts working when the night's <laughs> but, over. But just think about those guys, too. I mean, that guy's life is, I wake up in the morning, I do this hustle, go to the next place, do this hustle. Then at night, I go out and I do this other thing. So it's like, that guy's, it's not like he's just chilling. And he's got kids. These guys, exactly. These guys are like, there's less a million <laughs> plates that are spinning at the same time. Weren't so you? it's like at some point, this shit all falls apart for him. And he's like, oh, I got to undo ten, all 10 of my scams at once. I think you were there that night that I told him, he's like, I need to buy diapers. I'm like, well, there's this app job called Task Rabbit. <laughs> he's like, I'm not trying to hear that shit. Like, yeah, right. I need to come up right now. He started punching the window. See, I bet guys like that, though. It's like we're saying, like, like Donald Trump only has... 10 grand in his pocket those guys like that they're scamming this guy they're scamming that guy and everything that they're telling you about it it all adds up to like oh, i'm making all this money i bet you go in that guy's pocket he's got like 300 bucks oh dude he's At got any nothing. given time these guys have nothing they're pulling all these scams all the money's coming in but it's also going out somehow yeah there's never a long term like there's never an escape plan oh, i'm gonna do all this and then i'm gonna buy a, a laundromat it's never that. Right. It's always like, no, nah, I do all this so I can spend all this money on shoes and, you know. And dope and a girl. Girls and all this other stuff. And it's like, it never. there's never a legit plan at the end. I'll tell you where the, there is, but it's not with these white American guys. I'll tell you where the legit plan is. I met a girl. She used to come to LOL and watch the shows. And uh, she was one of those spa girls that works at a spa, you yeah. know bang you for 200 bucks yep dude she would tell me but you have to pay 40 percent to the house right. to the mom or whatever yeah but she would tell me she's like yeah she goes you know seven minutes eight minutes maybe at the most 15 20 but she's like i'd go room from room she's like i'd make 600 dollars in 15 in like less than an hour right and she's like that's after paying the house you know, and she like imagine you're working all night. You're making this girl's got to be making like ten grand, and then they then they go buy the laundromat, or they to go back well, to their country. Yeah, I, that's what more likely. Yeah, I think here's all, the other thing about all this scam, and we're talking about like taxes and everything, is it's to turn dirty money into clean money. It costs even more. Wow, because you can't just go up and buy a laundromat cash. You don't think so? No. I mean, that's, nobody's going to sell a laundromat in cash unless they're like that crooked, in which case you're obviously overpaying for it. Yeah. Because it's like if you have all that money cash, you have to launder that money somehow. So you have to start another business and then you're, you know, you're trying to 
pretend that that money came in through this other thing. Wow. But the way all these criminals, that's the problem with living a criminal lifestyle like that is that like anytime you hear about somebody trying to launder, like Pablo Escobar types, yeah. and they're trying to launder, they got a million dollars cash that they got illegitimately and they're trying to turn it into clean money. They only come out with like 200 grand. Yeah. Because you got to pay a crooked attorney. You got to pay a crooked accountant. Then you got to send all this money through all these different places. And so you never really get out clean. Yeah. Unless you're like really, really going at like millions of dollars. In which case, I mean, at some point you're going to get locked up. Yeah, I knew a guy caught up to him. He had a nice scam, dude. I was a little jealous of him. Actually, I had two friends. Well, one of them, I don't know if this is a scam. He was selling heroin. Yeah. But he ended up getting hooked on it. And he had to sell his front door. He got so poor. Right. But then I knew another guy that, um, dude, he had a nice scam. He said he used to go to doctor's offices and he would act like he was like doing some sort of, I don't know what it was. I think he was saying like he would just lie and say he was um, selling gumball machines. Like he was like, we'll yep. put a gumball machine in here. But he it was just lying. He didn't even have a gumball machine. Right. And he would make it like some weird thing to where they have to pay a percentage, something like to where they would definitely say no. Right. But his whole reason was he wanted to see which receptionist at the doctor's offices weren't that attractive or had low confidence. Hmm. And then he'd flirt with them. And uh, this is in Ohio, though, too. So, <laughs> so you know how they look. <laughs> he'd flirt with them <laughs> this is in new york city and he would um he would get in good with them he'd get them to fall in love with him he's a handsome guy man like, right yeah. real attractive i mean i don't know how to judge guys but all the girls loved him man yeah he was this italian dude you know had a bmw because he was just scamming people yeah but um anyways and these girls would fall for him and he would get them to steal him the prescription papers. Yeah. yeah. And he would write his own prescriptions for Oxycontins. Mm -hmm. And dude, he would trade somebody for Coke. So he would have, he didn't know anybody on Oxycontin, but he, he just, I guess he did Coke. So he knew how yeah. to, to sell Coke. Cause he hung out with yeah, Coke same guys. Right. Yeah. So he would say, he would go to the bar, he would sell $20 worth of Coke. And as the night would get later on, he he bought this stuff. It was fake Coke from like a head shop. It was yeah. like a numbing Nasetol or something. Uh -huh. So he said he'd be like, "Yeah, let me fix you up." And he had to, he would color coat his things with paper, so he knew which ones was the weak Coke and which one was the real shit. Right. And then he'd give them. The first one would be like that strong shit. Yeah. And then the second one might be strong. And then as the night goes on, yeah, people he, are drunk. Yeah, he'd start selling them the fake shit. Yeah. yeah. And, dude, he said he made so much money. He was getting it 100% for free. He right. would trade Oxycontin for a kilo of Coke, bro. Yeah. yeah. And he said he, what he did was he had a Coke head that would pick the Coke up and deliver it for him. And he would just give him, like, a little teaspoon, like a little gram. The dude did it for, like, $60 worth of Coke. Wow. He would risk 20 years in jail for 60 bucks. Yeah. I mean, this is the kind of scam, though, where it's like... You do that for like a couple nights. Yeah, he and got caught. You get out. But yeah, you're going to get caught. First off, with somebody, you're going to just rip off the wrong person. Or you're just in a bar selling drugs. He got caught with the fake prescriptions. Yeah. That's how they got him. They gave him two years. And uh, like, See, what's weird, though, is I think the apartment scam guy, I'd rather do that than sell coke. Yeah, but dude, I that's don't know. That's actually like, I mean, it's that's pretty smart the way you figure that out. Do you think you could pull off acting gay? You don't even got to act. I think he's probably like... That's just some that, hood stuff. That's him thinking he's being smart. <laughs> that guy doesn't have to do that. He's a white guy. He's, <laughs> right. He dressed clean. You don't got to act gay. I mean, you go to an apartment. <laughs> yeah. The, the, <laughs> the landlord wants to rent out. That's so funny is that that guy... That's This is one of those smart, dumb guy things. Where he's like, oh, I know what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm going to put on a cowboy hat. Yeah. I'm going to be the gay cow... It's like, no, this is, I think deep down that guy just wants to act gay. <laughs> right, it's like, it's like, this is, it's, he's pulling a scam on you yeah <laughs> i think hood dudes do naturally think if you act gay people trust you more well i think the problem with the any any kind of scam like this is you never get a chance to a b test it i'll tell you what it is it comes down to reputation like everybody as a person holds a certain reputation like 
like you believe it or not, you being Japanese, you could be lazy and a drunk, but people would be like, Oh man, that dude yeah. works hard. Mm-hmm. He's disciplined. Yeah. Us, you know, and then you get a gay person, their reputation is all, oh, come on, gay people always play, pay their bills on time. Yeah, that's you know? true. But I mean, like, if you had to really, like, if that's all you knew about somebody, it's like, yeah, of course, I'd probably assume the gay guy. Is yeah. Good. But if you're in a situation where you're an apartment broker and you're like, you know, want to rent this out to somebody, it's like, no, nah, just a, a white guy who's cleanly dressed is going to do fine. Right. You don't got to do this, like, Mrs. Doubtfire act. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he goes, I really play it up. That's so funny. It's also funny, too, because at the end, he switches up and he goes back to being his hood thing. But it's like, at that point, it's like, just be gay at the end, too. Right. It's like, (laughs) why why are you even giving away the scam? Yeah. All you're doing is inviting more scrutiny at that point. (laughs) Yeah. At that point, at the end, they could have been like, oh, I got ripped off by a gay guy. And it's like, that would have been fine. But it's like, no, now the guy knows. Like, no, this guy was like trying to pull one over on me. Yeah, then he he said, you know, it's crazy how trustworthy people are of white people. He said he gives them everything fake, dude. Like, I didn't know this. You know, you could go buy a fake ID offline for like 50 bucks. Yeah, I think it's tougher now. now yeah. There's like holograms and shit, but yeah. Oh, wow. But that's probably like why there is holograms. Dark web and stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy, too. But yeah, anyways, he's like, yeah, these people try to fight me. I don't get worried. You know, I, I stay strapped. You know, nobody knows my <laughs> name. This guy, there's no way this lasts long. Yeah, it's just like the other thing we were talking about with that other guy where it's like, all right, he's pulling this off for now, and it probably feels good to get away with it, but it's like you were on a short road at that point. I don't even know his name. I was like, Gary, I seen him, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah, he, he wasn't Didn't turned. turn around? <laughs> oh. Yeah, hey, right. The guy's got like, uh, yeah, born identity. <laughs> he's got 10 passports. I worked with a dude and he was the best scammer. He was a car salesman, which I mean, let's say they're the best scammers. Yeah. Those and Uber drivers are good at lying to you. They always try to tell you like I was just in the Uber with a guy. And then he told me he just moved here from Ukraine like four days ago. And he's trying to save his family. I'm like, dude, no, you didn't. You don't become an Uber driver in four days in yeah, New York. You have to get your driver's license. <laughs> right. yeah. You know, and uh, you know, but he scammed me. He's like, any dollar would help if you could tip. That's what he legit told me. Well, he's trying to scam me for a dollar. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's pretty low on the low on the totem pole, I think. But I had this car salesman guy, and he was real country, dude. And he goes, nah, you know us country boys, we're good at heart. And, dude, I, I got to know him really well. And he drops the accent. He only does that in front of customers. He's back in Ohio? Yeah, he was just a normal dude, talk like you or me. Yeah. He'd be like, man, ain't this some shit, man? The fucking bull's lost. <laughs> dude, he'll just talk just like that. But then a customer comes in, hey, well, hey, how the heck are you? That's the thing, though. It's like he's not scamming. That's salesmanship right there. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, nah, the, the customer is going to buy a car. So it's like it's a real car, and he's giving them real, you know. Man. So it's a, that's just like a little sleazy, I think. I knew another dude, dude. He'd really invest in the people. And like when you sell cars, you got to really – love the like you got really being for the people i remember this one guy he'd be holding their baby and have yep. his fingers in the baby's mouth i'm like dude what is, the baby just gumming on his finger <laughs> some car sales hey, always be closing yeah. Say, yeah, yeah i couldn't do it dude i'll never forget i had this lady come in i just wanted to help her out you could kind of see on on the books we had a car we just took in for like 400 bucks and they tried charging her like six thousand wow. dollars. They're like, "Yeah, it's dock fee." And dude, you could look up the car, and it's it's only worth like twenty two hundred. Yeah. And they're like, "Oh," and she was trading in a nice car. It just needed a little bit of work. Yeah. She just needed like a van or something because she had another kid. Her car couldn't hold four kids or whatever. Yeah. And they're like, "Nah, tell her start her off. Tell her we'll only give her a thousand for her car." And, <laughs> and they were gonna give her like three thousand. Yeah. And then he's like, "Then we could keep that two thousand. <laughs> and then you up this price, you make five thousand off this dumb bitch." And dude, I'm like, dude, I want to help her though. Wow, you can't ever help people and sell cars. Yeah, you they got fu- too much heart. They got rid of me for it. They're like, dude, you you're never gonna sell cars. They're like, if you can't scam a single mother that's desperate, right? Hey, look at her. Look how desperate she is. And she's sitting there. Her kid didn't even have shoes on. She's like trying to work it out, dude. There. And they're like, you can't scam. That's the easiest target. Wow. You should make five thousand off. Yeah, her. I was like the first level in Punch Out. Lie to her. <laughs> right. That's what they're saying. You're Fuck playing her. On, playing on easy mode. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm like, dude, why why don't you care about her? Wow. <laughs> You think, too, with all these scams, especially with like a car thing like that, it only gets harder to pull these scams off. If that was that same scam back in like the 70s, how oh, would you, now these days you go on Carfax, you put in the VIN number and you find out the history. Back in the day, it was just the guy's word. 
Right. So, I mean, think about how many more people were getting scammed back in the day, even when we were kids. Oh, dude, so bad. Yeah, you know, and back then, like nowadays, that's why they're getting rid of car dealerships. Ford, I think I've seen a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All those car vines, you could go to a vending machine and get a car now. There's no reason why the system has to work the way it does. You, just all, for people just, to get rich. And in between, it's just like New York City getting an apartment. There's most other cities in the world. You go to the landlord, and the landlord says, here's how much the rent is. I'll run a credit check. New York City, you got to go through another guy. Who's like, oh, I'm going to give me one month's rent. I'll, right. t- I'll talk to the landlord. And it's like, this is an entire job that doesn't have to be there whatsoever. The middleman. Added nothing to this equation. And yet that guy, the reason why that they'll never get rid of that guy is that that guy wants to make money. Yeah. And they're like, hey, what do I got to lose? Yeah. And so it's like, even when the city, they tried to change the law. So there's no more apartment brokers. Apartment brokers were like... No, nah, fuck that. We're doing it anyways. Right. And isn't there a thing where you don't have to pay the apartment fees now, but they still hit you with it? They still do it because they're like, what else are you going to do? Yep. You're not going to get this apartment b- besides me. And this is a deal. Yeah. And I'm, I'm only charging you $1,000 more than it's worth. Yeah. I love how they go. People are lined up for this apartment at this price. Then they call you four days later. It's like, well, w- I thought you said you have 10 people lined up yeah. for the apartment at 3800 a month. Yeah. Listen, we're going to cut you a deal. But the thing is, the reason why these apartments are so hard to get and why landlords won't just deal with you is that guys like the scammer guy. Yeah. They're the ones that are fucking it up for everybody else. Because now it's like, you know, the apartment. Because it's really hard to kick somebody out of an apartment in New York City. Right. So it's like, that's why they got to run all these background checks and take all this money from you. Dude, it's... The uh, honest people like me and you are the ones that get screwed. Always. Yep. Yeah, dude. Trying Um, to play the game. You know, uh, with the, what do you call, it's like all these people are people that I feel like didn't make it, failed at everything they tried to do, yeah. and then they found some loophole, like the apartment guy, I met them, dude, they're the scummiest <laughs> shit, they'll meet you at a Dunkin' Donuts, yeah. yeah, come to my office around four, and then, hey, I'm out of the office, I'm at Dunkin' Donuts, dude, you don't have an office, Yep. I had an acting coach like that, dude. I was meeting him. I met him in the stairwell of a <laughs> acting studio, actor studio, uh, and they kicked him out. They were like, we told you you got to leave. Wow. <laughs> dude, he's just scamming people. Jeez. And he's like trying to teach me how to act in the in the hallway of this place. Yep. Like it's legit. Guarantee you that guy next week, different phone number. Yeah. He's got 10 phones. He puts a different SIM card in or something. Most of those acting coaches are, are scam. Like, this is what I don't get about the acting world. You're always learning from somebody that failed at it. Right. It's the same with comedy. Like, if you're that good of a comedian, you don't need to teach it. Exactly. But you'll see these people and they'll brag to you about it. They'll be like, dude, between my bringer shows, my how to host a comedy show class, yep. I make 7000 a month. What do I need to go out on the road for 1500 for? Yep. And it's like, yeah, but dude, why, who's taking these? And people take them. People just want to take a class. People want to take a class. And it's like the reason why you're not doing it, the reason why I'm not doing it is because we have whatever, some sort of pride. Yeah. But we have that pride now. Yeah. 10 years from now. Who knows? Plus, I, it's like all, all these all these guys, like we're saying about scammers, they're never actually rich. They're always these guys. If you were smart and you were responsible with money and you knew how to do things, you wouldn't bother scamming. Right. You'd have a legit job and a legit business. Yeah. So all these guys who are getting are like acting coaches who are like taking all this money from you, they're also broke. Yeah. At the end, they end up broke too. Dude, you look them up. They were a background extra in like Batman when Danny DeVito was in it. <laughs> yeah. It's like. <laughs> What's well, funny though with that, these kinds of scams, it's almost like a pyramid scheme. Yeah. Where it's like they saw they probably got scammed themselves. <laughs> and then they realized like, all right, well, I clearly I can't get a refund. So yeah. all I can do is turn around and scam the next guy. Yeah. And it just perpetuates like that. I took one comedy class from this guy. His name was The Clown or something. In and Ohio? He, yeah. He was like on a, um, it was two guys. It was The Clown and his manager. And I think he was <laughs> on like morning TV. He got embarrassed on it too. But that was his only credit. Like he was on the Cleveland morning show wow. one morning. And his whole thing was he dressed up like a clown and went on stage and he was like, all right, I'm going to teach you guys how to do comedy. He goes, rule number one, 
if people are talking, step away from the microphone and get quieter and they'll listen. Dude, I've been doing comedy for 10 years. That's They're going to the talk louder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the complete opposite of what you want to You got to go in and yeah. fuck it. You got to get each person that's listening and make bitch. them laugh. Yeah. And then <laughs> roast them people. Yeah. This girl got some tits on her, huh? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, and it was all these things. And then he told me, he was like, yeah, man, you're never going to do well on stage. And then I ended up, like, I guess he forgot about me and I ended up working with him and I did way better than the dude like two months later. Because if you if you go up in a clown suit, there's a 50 50 shot that you're going to lose. And his whole thing, the discru- I can't say his name because we could probably yeah. get sued. But either way, his whole thing was he was very angry. He was a clown that was angry. Yeah, it doesn't. You know, dude, that's why he's teaching the class. It don't work well. Nobody's paying to go see an angry clown, really. But the thing is, you got to think this guy is not a talented person. This is the best he can do. But he had, and it's working out for him. It's better if he tried to go the legit route, he would be destitute. He, so it's like these guys end up turning around. Well, I'll make some money. Yeah. Doing this other stuff. Well, he was cleaning up, actually. He he capped his class at like 35 people. Oh, my God. And I think it was 400 for the class. And it was like, wow. Uh, I think it was like, dude, honestly, I think it was just one day. I'll yeah. be honest with you. Wow. Yeah, I think it was one day, and it was like 400 bucks. and the way he sold it was he's a national touring headliner, and he'll put your name in. You could open for him. You could feature at yep. one of the top clubs, and nobody's ever worked for him. You know, like wow. you said, they changed their phone number. Yeah, man. All you got to do is just tapping into somebody's. You got to figure out what people are like insecure about, where it's like you're trying to start doing comedy. It's very scary for people. So it's like, oh, I could help you start. Right. So I could get you over that hurdle. Or it's like, it's very scary to like, you know, pick up artists. It's very scary to approach a woman in public. Yeah. So it's like, I'll take, I'll help you take away that fear. So it's all about figuring out what the person is a little bit nervous about and then acting like you have the answer to it. Yeah. And then you can just charge them any, any amount. Dude, you know what a good scam is too? Bartending class. Oh, yeah. I did one Weinsteins and cocktails. People are scared of actually like fucking up in a bar yeah they think like oh if i take this class they'll teach me how to make a manhattan and if i because if you do it wrong in the bar you're gonna get embarrassed yeah and but that's not true you know nobody knows (laughs) nobody knows and if you fuck it up you just do it again but it's like people think like oh i better take this class i'll get get some bullshit certification yeah and that's that's how they sell it to you they're like oh and we'll get you a bartending job really if you want to take a bartending class there should only be one thing that should be said to get a bartending job it should say welcome to the class now if you want to work at a job at a bar get breast implants and yeah hot girl. Yep. <laughs> they're gonna hire you even a man dude Be i knew a looking. man in youngstown dude and guys would kiss him dude wig breast implants jacked tattoos people would be like nah that's not a man i'd be like dude yeah that's my dude you know mike it's like come on that's right. a man and he just transitioned <laughs> just like no he's not he, i just tipped him 30 bucks kissed him right on the mouth everybody that walked in wow. lip injections he changed his life he said hey man i had a, a close encounter uh and i just decided i wanted to become a, a woman and bartend good for him and he was a stallion Outer. dude tw- 19 inch biceps because wow. they were like uh they used to play football in college and i want to pay this guy yeah <laughs> and dude it's about six three wow but some huge balloons dude like i'm telling you the size of a street light these things were astronomically big wow killed it bartending yeah i mean like most bartending, I think there is a certain high level of bartending if you're at like a really fancy like, you know, hotel bar where it's like $40 cocktails. Yeah. Most of that guy got those implants and shit. He's just pouring Bud Light. Right. He's pouring a Tecate, you crack open a can and it's like, it's not like it's that hard. Right. Yeah. And if a bar really messes with you as a worker, they don't care about the customer at these regular bars. Yeah. You'll be like, hey, this don't taste right. They'll be like, okay, can you leave? You're kicked <laughs> out now. <laughs> I've so, never had a bartender who I actually thought I couldn't do that. Right. Yeah. There's never been like, oh, this guy really knows what he's doing. He's just pouring a Pacifico. I didn't have that until I bartended. You know, I bartended for a short period. Yeah. And when you got people really lined up at the bar, 
it's hard. Like you'll get, you're grabbing three drinks, everybody's waving their money, and then you'll be like, Cosmopolitan, Long Island's easy, but sometimes people would be like, a Sex on the Beach, a Cosmopolitan, yeah, yeah. and a uh, Manhattan, and a uh, Mojito. And then and then you'll be like, dude. Then you're looking for a tequila. It's in the basement because they're out. Right, right. And then you're like, dude, what the what the hell am I doing? <laughs> yeah. Giving people the wrong drinks. Yeah, yeah. And when food's in the mix, dude, it, bartending isn't an easy job. You got to be able to multitask if you're at a busy bar. It depends what the bar is. Though. It depends on what the bar uh, is. Well, most dive bars, it's just pouring beer. If you're at a dive bar, yeah, you got well, well drinks and beer. It's like, come on. It's more personality. Yeah, I mean, even dude, then, though, it's like most bartenders I come across are not like being super friendly, and they're not like lighting stuff on fire. You give them a, I mean, they're they're giving him like a dollar or two tip or something. Right, it's like a guy who just pours a, a Bud Light and gives it to me. And if you're like, too friendly, people act like this is such a big thing. If you're bartending and you're too friendly, what I learned is that's so much bad. You got to command the ship. It's like a comedy show. You can't go up there and be extremely nice and worried like. When I first started bartending, I was like, okay, how are you? Uh, I'll get that for you. Just give me a moment. And yeah, well, you got you to act like you own the place. Yeah, you got to be like, look, man, what, yeah, what do you want? You the button. This is what we got. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yep. We got well. Yeah, dude, we got well. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, you got to be in with a good company, I guess. I, I did terrible at bartending. I stabbed a dude in the hand, dude. It was so busy. I handed him the knife, you know? It was funny because I was a waiter too, so they were really getting good money out of me. I, I ran the whole show from the to upper. Remember that restaurant? Yeah. Upper. They closed down. I actually got them. I feel like I got them closed down. To be honest with you, right? Because uh, they got me fired for something messed up, and uh, one of the people that came there. I, I knew somebody from the health department. I was like, go check this place. Out. Oh right, yeah. <laughs> you know, but um. I think any restaurant in New York, you could just walk in and get it shut down. Like yeah. the health department can close down every restaurant in New York. That's the new mob. They grease the health department. It's some guy coming. They're like, hey, we don't got to say anything about that, if you know what I mean. Not just that, but every restaurant in New York City is on the verge of going out of business anyway. Right. Yeah. Rats and cockroaches. But um, this place, dude, I had to, the whole front of the restaurant... I had to, you know, answer the phones for the orders, do the bar. And it's like I'm basically doing everything till like six o'clock and I didn't make that much. And then it gets busy and the servers come in and then they wait on the tables. But, dude, sometimes it would get busy, the lunch hour rush. And, uh, dude, they're like, get them this. And then you got the owner of the company screws it up more. They're like, get them waters. You're already busy as hell. Get them waters. Get them. They have five waters on the table. Right, right. Get them some waters. The important thing with bartending is any restaurant job, you just got to look busy. Yep. The owner just wants to see you looking busy. Hey, you got time to lean. You got time to clean. Yeah. You should start doing jobs and walk away from them and yeah. start another job and yep. walk away from that. Then it looks just, like, damn, he's doing five things. Yeah. He ran over here and got a towel. Right. <laughs> then you're wiping something up. You're doing this. You're on the phone acting like you're doing an order. What would you get? You yeah. know, get some chips going, washing glasses eight times. That's what a lot of people do, though, when you see the owner wash some glasses. See, the the thing that ties all these stories together is that everybody is scamming. Yep. At a certain, once you're like, unless you're at a certain <laughs> level of just like legit, regular job, everybody is scamming everybody. We looked up. You the, just stay in the mix long enough. Eventually, it's your turn to scam somebody. We looked up the owner of the one restaurant I worked for, and uh, dude, he did 20 years in prison. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, these guys are all, the, the money they're getting, they're, it's all tax-free somebody's got somebody else is getting scammed yeah somebody is scamming him so he's got to make more money now to scam you it scams all the way down it's just a big circle of scams <laughs> what do you think <laughs> and the, I hope eventually you move to new jersey what do you think the best plan is to just live you think get a normal job put away your taxes have a family most of these problems do not exist if you just have a high a regular job with a w-2 yeah if you get a regular job with a w-2 they take the taxes out for you the taxes go straight to the government. Maybe you get a little bit of money back at the end of the year. And then you have that money and you own a house. So you're not paying a broker every, you know. Yeah. All these things are taken care of in a legit way. And you know how they, most other cities, it's like you ask how much something costs, they give you a price. Yeah. In New York City, they you ask how much something costs and it's like, how much you got? Yeah, right. You're right. <laughs> they'll look at you. Give they'll me size, you up, size you up and they'll give you a really big number and they'll, they'll talk you down. 
And that's not just New York, dude. That's everywhere in the world I go, dude. When I was just in Mexico. Well, you're in bad places, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to first world countries and like first world cities, first world countries. No, they give you a price. Right. It's a very legit operation. But you go to cities like New York or you go to most of these third world countries, it's like everybody's scamming everybody. Yeah. But it's like if most of these problems don't exist if you just for regular people who live in the suburbs. And it's just drive a Corolla. <laughs> Yeah, but then those people got to pay through the nose in taxes. It's so messed up. Like, I think there would be less crime and less of these scammers if they was just people would be fair with us making 30000 a year. You know, no, there would still be scammers. <laughs> those people are still going to scam. Yeah. That's just kind of is what you make a decision early on in life of whether or not you get on the path. You're on the legit path. And me and you are not on that path. But there was a path you could have taken where it's like too legitimacy right and there's a path you can take to just kind of getting by like we yeah. do and it's like the longer you get on the get by path it's that much harder to go back yeah on the right path and it's like at this point that's why we need to get rich doing this and I'm, we got to get so rich <laughs> that you pay off your tax bill and it's not even a big deal right but it's like the problem is that if you get to just like that middle zone where it's like you're still just getting by but you're doing a little bit better that's still not getting by because you're still on borrowed time there. You're still kind of running in quicksand. So yeah. it's like everybody who's scamming, it's like, that's why you got to be able to think long term. Where it's yeah. like, I'm scamming now, but at some point I'm going to go legit and then I'm just going to be clear. They always say that. They say that, but they never do. <laughs> one last hit. Exactly. I need yeah. one last I'm one. I'm going to scam one last department. I'm going to act gay one last time. And then that's the one where they get you. Yeah, exactly. They're like, listen, don't go chasing the dog's tail after you bit it that <laughs> yeah, much. Right? Like that Mel Gibson You got no one to hold him. No one to fold him. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's almost like, do you think, here's a good scam. I don't know what this is, but you ever see like an actor that you like and then they do like a shitty movie overseas and somehow yep. you see it and you're like, they just scam. Steven Seagal. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, well, that's, Steven Seagal's movies, those are all entertaining in a way. Well, I mean, he's doing movies in like the Russia and, like and Kazakhstan or something. It's still decent though. Yeah, but that's not like a scam. That's just, you're reducing yourself. That's the problem with when you take kind of a, if you try to go for quick money, is that in the end, you're just trying to take quicker and quicker money for smaller and smaller amounts. Yeah. That's why you see these same road hacks who are like, maybe back in the day you were getting, you were scamming somebody for three grand for a weekend. Now they're in their late sixties and they're trying to make 40 bucks at Broadway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no, that they exit. you never exit into like a nice place. And they got one dead tooth. They're just trying to get that root canal. Yeah. They're just trying to like steal a little pepsi out of the soda fountain right what do you mean i can't get free wings <laughs> yeah, right. i've been giving free wings since the 80s yeah right <laughs> you see me i was on letterman 